So good afternoon. Can I say two things before we start? The first is that I interrupted you at the end of the Nader, uh, Sabah Nader's <coughs> commemorations when I know you wanted to thank the family for their contributions. So can I apologise? Well, don't worry. I, I'd like to make it clear straight away that I am find, already finding these uh, descriptions of the deceased extremely moving, and I'm very uh, conscious of the effort which some of those who are presenting them uh, have had to make in order to tell us about their loved ones. It, it can't be an easy exercise, and I'm very grateful to all, all of you who've come along to do this. And if I don't mention something specifically at the end of your address, don't think that I don't appreciate it. I do very much indeed. So thank you. <clears throat> so we are now moving to a commemoration for Joseph Daniels. And that is going to be presented by his son, Sam. Two things. Uh, the first is, I think it was flat 135 in which he lived. And secondly, that Sam has asked specifically that there be no applause after his presentation. Yeah. Thank you. My father, Joseph Daniels, moved to London in 1982. And Grenfell Tower had been his only home since then. The events of that night took his life and all trace of his existence in this world. He never stood a chance of getting out. It should never have happened. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm not going to ask you to rise, as you've only just come in, but there will be a moment whilst we arrange the next two <coughs> commemorations who are going to sit on the stage together. Right. One is for Mary Mendy and the other for Khadija Say. Thank you. We'll take whatever time you need. Thank you very much. So if everyone for them would like to come up. <coughs> Uh, the commemoration for Mary Mendy, who lived in flat 173, is going to be presented by the solicitor for the family, Shaki Ratu Sanusi. Are you going to do it from there or from the lectern? From I'll there. Thank you very much. Would you introduce who's on the podium with you? Betty Mendy is Mary's sister. Sorry, could you just pull that in front of you so we can hear you speak into it? Thank you. Yep. Betty Mendy, she's Mary's sister. This is Brian Jackson, a friend providing her with support. And David Lanny, who is very close friends with Hadija. And of course, this is Marcia Willis-Stewart. Thank you. I've been asked by people who manage the sound to ask you if you could put the microphone in front of you. So some, that's it perfectly, and that way we're going to hear everything that you say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is a statement for Mary Mendy, prepared by and being read on behalf of her sister Betty Mendy and Marion Telfer, her niece. Mary Ajayi Augusta Mendy was born in the Gambia on 11th June 1965. She was hardworking. She came to England in the 1980s. In 1992, she gave birth to Hadija, which turned out to be the greatest and proudest day of her life. Sorry to interrupt, I'm just gonna ask you to pause to see if we can get the lights to come down just a little bit more. 
because they are beautiful photos and we'd like to see them. That's much, can you see all right? That's much better, thank you. She completely devoted her life to Hadija. Marion says, I joined my aunt in December 1992. We moved into Grenfell Tower around 1993. My aunt and Hadija lived at the address until that fateful night where our lives were changed forever. My aunt was my hero. She has been in my life for every major event. She was my mum as well as my aunt. For the first time in my life, my aunt is not a phone call away. She's not there to listen to my complaints or my gossip. My aunt made me, made me a priority in her life. She was the best aunt and sister we could have asked for. She was warm and kind. She welcomed everyone into her home. Grenfell Tower was a place all her family and friends could find shelter if they ever needed it. Mary Ajay Augusta Mendy was a carer who worked within her community. She was a humanitarian who made it a passion to help those less fortunate than herself. She frequently traveled to Gambia and offered donations to hospitals and other organizations. On the night of June 14, 2017, our family lost two much loved members. My aunt was the strong one, the fighter and the protector. The pain is unbearable. There are no words to describe the emptiness that's in our hearts. Marion says, I hate night times because night brings silence and silence brings tears of sadness because that's when I start to remember the blaze of fire. There will be two empty chairs on the table for every birthday, Christmas and New Year's, but they will forever own a position in our hearts. We will carry their memories throughout our lives, our children's and our children's children. Although the pain feels like forever, it will soon be replaced by happiness. All of the tears will be replaced by memories of joy. Until we meet again. Thank you. I think we're now going to move to the portrait for Khadija saying from the same flat and I think Mar Marcia you're going to present that Dear Sir Morbic my daughter Khadija Say was 24 years old when she lost her life in the Grenfell Tower fire of June 2017 she was very gentle very kind and friendly she was born in Hammersmith, London, in 1992. She attended St. Charles Primary School and Sion Manning Secondary School, both in Ladbroke Grove, West London. She later went on to Rugby School in Rugby, Warwickshire, and the University for Creative Arts in Farnham to study photography. Her burning passion was photography encouraged by her mother, Mary Mendy, who also lost her life in the same fire. Khadija said to me one day, Daddy, I'm in love with images. It was this passion that Khadija pursued to the end because it gave her great satisfaction and brought her some joy and happiness. Thank you very much. Yours sincerely, Mohamedou Say. Now, Marcio, I think what's going to happen now is that there's going to be a piece of film 
two things. Firstly, could you just tell us what we're going to see? And then before it's played, I'm going to ask that the lights are actually dimmed. And I'll do that for all of the videos so that when they're played, we can get to see them in their best possible way. So what are we going to see? Oh, sorry. We're going to see a short video put together um, following the documentary that was to be aired. She'd been part of a group of artists that had gone to the Venice Biennial. And um, following the unfortunate events of the 14th of June, um, a short clip was put together celebrating her and her burgeoning career, as it were, at the time. And together with her family, it was discussed at length and her father um, that it would be appropriate to show that edited version because part of it was filmed when she was at home in Grenfell and also it exhibited her talent and the poignancy of the development of her career shortly before all of that. Thank you. Well, I'm just going to ask that the lights perhaps be lowered a little more and then once that's been done, we'll see the video. Thank you. May I take a seat, sir? Thank you. Back in the day, I was very, I was very like a flamboyant child. I'd always be posing, which it's sort of changed now. I'm more comfortable behind the camera. I've become a lot more cautious and aware of what, of the power that the camera holds. So even looking at my area and how much it's changed in terms of the building developments, and I can look back at photos and see how <laughs> quickly the spaces um, change in the matter of like ten years. extreme contrast to my area in Lovebrook Grove. So it was a big culture shock having to adapt to a very different lifestyle that I felt very much on the outside because everyone sort of grew up in this sort of like 
opulence and opportunities and the sky's the limit. I wanted to do photography, but I was sort of fighting it because I felt it's not something I should do. It's something I should do on the, do on the side. But having such supportive teachers that actually led me to pursue that. And uh, yeah, I'm very grateful to them because if not, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> parents are from Gambia and my mother is Christian and my father is Muslim so this idea of having these dual faiths and being brought up going to the mosque and going to church has always been something I've always found fascinating and it's one of the first times I've been able to explore it through my photography. strange because I just I woke up to people speaking Italian outside my window and it just clicked I was like oh no I'm not at home <laughs> I'm not in love with Grove anymore <laughs> and then one of my friends said you're an artist and I was like I am now <laughs> it'll be a quite an emotional moment to actually say Khadija you've done it it's you know you're you're up there all this work and this um, emotional journey and self-doubt and wanting to pack it in and it's going to come together and yeah I just can't wait really <laughs> I'm excited to show her the work she's extremely proud and She's been telling everyone that, you know, oh, my daughter's going to Venice. I'm not giving up here, and she won't give up either. So that concludes the photograph and, forgive me, the, the presentation. And on that really rather poignant and beautiful photograph, that concludes the presentations that we have prepared for today. Extremely impressive presentations and really bring to life again the people that you're commemorating. And I'm very grateful to have had a chance to see and hear them. Thank you. Includes the presentations we have today. If I may say, firstly, there will still be tea and coffee available upstairs, and so please feel able to spend some time upstairs with each other having tea and coffee. I'm around if people need to raise anything with me, but otherwise, may we please meet again tomorrow, ready for a 10 o'clock start. Yes, we'll, we'll uh, just finish now and start again at 10 o'clock tomorrow, and I look forward to seeing all of you here again then. Thank you very much. Thank you.